one of the things I pointed out was you don't always have two overlapping circles. In this case, we have three. So we can go ahead and draw all of those. What we're going to do is first, we'll just fill in some numbers so we know what we're talking about, and then we're going to have a look at what it is that this represents. So there's a C of B and A of B. And then we got some numbers. I'd really appreciate it if, as I go through, someone can tell me if I accidentally write the numbers incorrectly. I think that's about right. Are you guys okay with that? Do not books. Um, I think it would be really helpful if you draw it in your books because for me, um, a diagram, and hopefully you've noticed this already, right? A diagram is not just a tool for communicating thought to someone else. It's also a tool for constructing your own thoughts. It's why so often when you've been doing geometry problems in the past, you look at a problem and you can't solve it. But then as you draw it yourself in your own book, you're like, oh, oh I get it now. These are the angles that matter. Well, these are the sides that matter. So the very act of creating it, I would encourage as much as possible. All right, once you've done so, let's start to unpack these questions together and understand what the situation means. It says, this Venn diagram shows the results of a survey on how people, uh, how people commute, how they get to work. Okay? So the C, B, and T, they stand for car, bus, and train. So the first question is, how many people participated in the survey? Now, we have a look at this diagram, right? These numbers represent how many people fit in each section. So if I want to know how many people in total participate in the survey, what do I do with these numbers? Just going to take the total. Okay, so go ahead. Um, you're more than welcome to use your calculator if you feel like it's necessary. I'll give you a second to get there. We're going to take all those numbers, add them up, and when someone has a total, can you let us know? Is it up I think it's 100. Total equals 100. And it'd be good if you can double check that yourself just so that we can all be convinced we're on the right page. Okay, now, you can see it says, after that, based on that 100, can we get drill into some more detail, right? So it says, how many people used all three methods, car, bus, and then it even italicizes, and train. Give an example, or give an explanation, rather, on how this might happen. So before we do the count, um, how can that happen? That someone has to use a car and a bus and a train to get to work. Yeah, go ahead. Drive a car to the train station, then catch a train, then catch a bus. From yeah. The train station. Perfect. This is actually literally how I often get into this, especially now that we have like train stations in, in our area. So I will drive to, um, I don't drive to Cherry because I don't live in this, so I'll drive to um, Hills Showground, who knows where that is, right? I'll drive there, get on the metro, and then once I get into the city, to get to somewhere more specific, like say after to work at um, Sydney University, um, that doesn't have a train station, so then I'll catch a bus from, from Central or wherever, okay? So, that's how it can happen. Maybe you want to jot down something to that event under part B. Can you now, as you're writing that, look at the diagram you've drawn and tell me which part of the Venn diagram is that group of people? It's the, what's the number by the way? It's the five, and you're telling me five because it's the overlap, or another word we might use is the intersection between car and bus and train. In other words, you've got to be in all three circles at the same time. So I guess what I would say is um, car, bus, and train, that's five people. Okay, and we already just talked through how that went out. Okay, so now we've got a, a handle on how the situation is going. Here's where the probability comes in. So you can see what part C asks you. Calculate the probability of selecting a person from this survey who travels by, and then they give you a whole bunch of different um, scenarios. So let's just go through a couple, and then I'll let you have a go at some on your own. Part one says, car only or bus only. So it might help. It's not obligatory, but if you have some colors, it might be useful. This is two different groups of people, right? There's the car only people and the bus only people. Which number is the car only people? Very good, 27. So you can see it's in, that number's in the car circle, but it doesn't overlap with any of the others. So I've got that. Where are the bus only people? 11 over here. So therefore, when I'm calculating my probability, just like when you're talking about um, tree diagrams and stuff like that, when you see the word or, what's the operation that goes in between those? Is it multiplication? Or is it, it's going to be addition, isn't it? So when you see the word four, you're going to be adding together rather than multiplying. So the 27 and the 11, 
the probability of getting a car only or bus only, that's going to be equal to 27 plus 7 would be, what's that equal to? 38, thank you very much. And then what's the sample space? 100, fantastic. Okay. It's 100 because I placed no restriction on who I might ask in this situation. It could be anyone on the page. So there's the probability, and you could of course uh, list that as a percentage if you want, 38%. Real quick, I'm not going to do the answer with you, I just want to make sure you're on the right track. When you look at part two, it just says car and train. Car and train. Now I'm going to get a different colour out, because our diagram is rapidly getting quite busy. Green will do. Car and train. So in this case, I'm looking for a particular group of people, the and means there's an overlap involved, right? So which overlap am I after? 20. It's going to be, well, this 20 is definitely in this circle and in this circle, so I'll underline that. But there's actually another number that's also between both circles. Which number is that? It's the five that you mentioned before, earlier, right? These people, they took a car and a train, didn't they? And there's no word that indicates that they're not allowed to take a bus. It doesn't say car and train only, that's actually the next part. So you've got those two numbers, you can go ahead and you can again list your probability there. Okay. Let me let you have a go at finishing two, doing three, four, and also part D. Have a go at those, and then we'll close back together when we get to part E. Probability of selecting someone who took car and train, but remember now we add the word only. So what's different between part two and part three? What change did you have to make? There's a group you'd have to, you have to take exclude, right? Who are you taking out? The, the bus people, right? Because you're like, you're not allowed, that word only excludes the bus people. Sorry, they're discriminatory. So now, what's the probability going to be? It's not 25 over 100, it's 20 over 100, which of course you can simplify to be equally a fit. Very good. And then this last one, uh, the probability of taking the bus and not the train. So which group of people is this? You have to think a little carefully, don't you? Um, does anyone feel confident that they could talk us through, not just give us the number, but talk us through how they came up with their number? Well, Do you want to trust? The 11 and the 12, but then you can't put the 5 and the 4 because they both they all take the train. Okay, very good. Fantastic. So um, let's think about, you've talked about four numbers in there, I want to take each one in turn. So you said the 11 and the 12, thumbs up, because they're bus people, right? The reason we haven't included the 5 and the 4 was why again? They also take the train. Yeah, very good. So they're in that area that we want to exclude. So therefore, um, 12 plus 11 gives us uh, 23. Oh, sorry, that's a 23. And then again, it's out of 100. Very good. Now you can see for all four of these that we just did, we always said out of 100 because we decided right from the get-go that there were 100 people in this situation. But that's where part D differs. Have a look at it with me. It's a bit of a um, verbal mouthful, so take your time with it. A person's chosen at random. Now, please, mark this phrase carefully. In fact, if you've got a highlighter, I would encourage you to get it out right now and highlight this phrase it's about. Um, it says, chosen at random from, here's the phrase to highlight, the people who travel by car or train only, but not bus. Just highlight that entire phrase. It is a mouthful, but that's why we're highlighting it. The people who travel by car or train only, but not bus. And then they ask the question, what's the probability that the person travels by car only? Okay, now because it says a person is chosen from that area, right? This is kind of what we would call conditional probability, right? So we're applying a condition. We're saying, you know what? I'm not going to let you choose from any of them. I'm restricting you now quite closely. You can only choose from some subsets of this, okay? Now I want you to help me work out. What are the subsets that are okay, or maybe is it easier to answer the other way? Which are the people I'm going to exclude? Bus. So, okay, it says, but not bus. So, should we just like erase every number in here? Do you feel like that would be the right way to go? Yeah. Okay. So, there's four numbers we just considered for this question, right? The 12, the 11, the 5, and the 4. This is one of the reasons why it's handy to have your own diagram, right? For the purposes of this question, I'm just going to forget that they exist. Because for, with regard to part D, I'm only allowed to choose from everyone who's left behind. Does that make sense? I had to exclude all those people. Okay. And then I say, what's the probability that the person, person travels by car only? So when I say part D, the, the probability that I'm calculating here, which are the people who travel by car only? 27. Very good. We looked at that earlier. 
Then when we say out of whatever, my sample space is now changed, it's no longer 100, what is the new sample space? Uh, 68, 68, 68, right? 68. Very good. So this changed sample space, of course, makes it far more likely because I've excluded so many people from the situation. Okay. Last little piece, and I think we can do this all together. Part A says, if 110 people actually participate in the survey, so we thought it was 100 from the beginning, right? But now they're saying, you know what, you missed 10. What extra information would be needed on the diagram? Yeah, go ahead. You put the extra 10 outside of the bubbles. Fantastic, yeah. So whoever those 10 were, I guess they don't fit in the information we've already got. So we're going to put them on the outside, being that we can conclude they didn't take car or bus or train. <laughs>